Okay, <clears throat> I crocheted just a little bit of my background netting to show you a few things that are very important. First of all, you notice that I already have some background netting built up on this side, on the right and on the left. Um, this part I already fastened to the fabric on the right, so you will need um, a sewing thread and fasten once in a while as the background is growing in size you fasten these pieces to the back uh, to the uh, canvas uh, it's easier to crochet this way and you will have a better picture of what is going on and the needle I always secure on the top of my work that I will not poke fingers you can even keep it on the back and the same I will do on this side on the left the same way so you don't want to allow your background netting to bubble like this right here so all you need to do is to take a thread and So the background net into the canvas. In such a way that it will actually make sense for you um, that it will not be stretched at the same time it will have the right shape. And when you finish with uh, fastening the background netting, when you don't need the needle, you just attach to the different part right in here that it will be um, not on the way. Now, as you noticed, don't worry about, first of all, that I already made something and you didn't see how I did it. Whatever I will show you right now is everything you will repeat. On this side of your work and on this side of the work, on both of them, you will can crochet them separately. But still, I want to tell you a few words about the background netting. First of all, your edges at first, right in here, will not be even. They will not look like this on the bottom. They will not look like foundation chain. And this right here also, you can see that you still have shape of a diamonds. We will when we will finish the whole project, the last video. I will uh, show you in the last video how to even up these edges to make them straight because this project is going to be a square and it is going to be um, we will crochet also the edges I will show you how to decorate the edge so don't worry about this right now just make simply attach them to the canvas that they will look nice and neat this is all you need to do for right now there also I want to show you that uh, tell you about background netting on the right. Every time you crochet odd number of background netting, I have printed my uh, pattern the same as you have. Uh, so I want you to pay attention to the row three or all uh, odd numbers at the very beginning of your work. The chain, the first chain you will crochet will have repeat three chain one time and then another time so I highlight this piece for me to remind me about this spot that I will not forget and I will not crochet this part this is longer this one right here arch consists of two pico uh, two chain two picos chain three pico chain two but this one have chain three repeats two, two times and we have three picos instead of two and this is needed and necessary to build uh, and keep the 
pattern of the background netting correct that it will look unbroken now as you noticed already I have connected the background netting to the leaf to one of the motifs it happens that in my case I could connect to the tip of the leaf and on another tip and here so there will be a very um, interesting part for you to recognize and remember all the time every time you come close to the motif your chain will not be necessarily follow the pattern described in the pattern you, I gave you so if you have every every arch consists of two chain peak or three chain peak or two chain that does not mean that when you come to the motif it will be the same for instance here if you see I connect my motif uh, my background net into this area right in here so I crocheted to chain two pico and chain one and then I connect it to the leaf right in here and then I turned my work upside down and I crocheted the arch right in here and again this arch also wasn't exactly the same length it was one then it was pico three pico two chain and then I connected to the arch simply because this area is shorter because the um, background netting is closer to the motif every time you get closer you it's not necessary that you will crochet exactly the same pattern but not to break the pattern that it will look nice in this area right here everywhere else we can break a pattern just a little bit and change the length of a pattern of the chain in order to attach to the motif and I will show it to you on an example right here I already have prepared one um, chain with picos and we will connect and see how I do this every time you connect to the motifs always connect with slip stitch in uh, classical uh, or traditional background netting uh, we connect uh, to the motifs with slip stitch it does not mean that I cannot connect with other stitches if it is required you can connect with double crochet or triple crochet it all depends on the background netting and your skill for now I'm showing you how to connect with a slip stitch it makes more sense for this particular background netting now one more uh, advice and uh, the rule for crocheting background netting so you will crochet to the point right in here where you had one two three rows you crochet three rows without problems and breaking the thread you crochet with and then you at some point will start to connect to the motif but you cannot crochet this direction anymore you cannot go there you have to stay and fill out this space right in here and then only after you finish here this is when you can take again thread reconnect with the uh, motif or with the background netting on the left and crochet background netting and fill out this space with background netting again connecting to the motif with slip stitches and keeping the right shape of a background netting following the, uh, a pattern so this is important part to remember so you will not crochet back and forth from right to left all the time from one side to another of your work it's not possible you have some things on the way the obstacle is your motif so let's look how I will connect this chain I made my chain and I can connect to the arch right in here this is the last chain in this row
and again you can or poke through the chain or you can just crochet single crochet connect it just like I did right now go with the hook under the chain now I will have to make a short chain I will make chain two or three make chain three we'll see <clears throat> I'll put my hook down and with the fingers I always kind of trying to uh, make my pattern look a little bit better as you see it's time to connect again with the motif you can see how where the chain is finished where the hook is I can simply connect to another tip of the leaf right in here this is why I made chain 3 it can be probably chain 2 for you or 4 it does not matter try to connect if it's a short chain don't make picos like right here I have connection you see I didn't have a pico there's no pico here this area don't have pico at all also it's just a chain that I connected no I do have a pico right in here but I wanted to keep my uh, pattern in this area this diamond have one pico and here makes sense to have those two picos okay so right now as you see if I'll take move the hook you can see that I can attach right in here my chain my background netting right in here so of course you will go back this direction so I turn my work in such a way that it will be comfortable for me and this is how good it is when the edges of the motifs are not sewn into the fabric you see I can basically grab that motif by the edge and by that tip and attach pick up two strands of thread and attach motif with the background netting and again with a slip stitch this part is not easy to do sometimes so help yourself don't do it fast and be very precise and clean so now I have this chain one I'm sorry uh, slip stitch and I always start with chain one chain one and this is this is when I can put down my work just to look what is it that I did does it actually look right so here it is I connect it right in here looks fine the rest of the pattern is not broken and we can crochet this direction to crochet even number we know what we have to do we turn it upside down the, the fabric and continue crochet our background netting only upside down so we have one then two and we can see what we can do it probably will make sense we will see I will make one chain following our pattern so I have chain two and I will make pico If upside down is not easy for you to see what's going on, you can always turn it the opposite direction. And this is how I do this. If you are curious how to make it right, I keep the chain on the hook, take another needle and put the chain, the end of it, closer to the arch that I will connect with it does look like that this chain will be a little bit too long you can see it's deformed so I probably have to make it shorter how much shorter evidently I don't need the pico and I don't need this 
chain. So I can make probably right away three pico and two and connect to the arch. So it's okay that I made something and I have to undo it. Next to the motifs you have to be as precise as you can possibly be. So we have one, two, three, I will get one more, four, then I will make pico. So what you basically do, you have to manipulate the size of your arches next to the motifs. One, two, and now we will connect to the chain, to the previous row, to the arch. I'll make one, two, stretch the stitch, and I will turn the work in the normal position we always see. And see what actually happens. Will it actually look right? If I will do it this way. So if I will happen to have here another arch right now, right? And I connect it here. If you follow me, connect here. The next arch will be chain 2, pico, chain 3 and pico. This seems to me a little bit too long chain. So I will undo it again. I want it to be nice and neat. So I will undo it and instead of 4 like I did, I will make probably 3 or even 2. One, two. I'll do two. And I will get pico. And two. One, two and we connect to the arch of the previous row. And probably this time it will look much better. Again, one, two. And we can look at the chain right in here. And if you see, it does look better, much better. So later when I will crochet, arch in here, I will connect behind this pico and then I connect somewhere to the motif in such a way that it will not, um, it will work fine. So I can continue crochet the rest of the arches, loops, whatever you used to call it. So we're making a pico. Again, pico. chain two. So I showed you the method of connecting to the uh, previous round, uh, pr previous row, this way when you work your uh, work upside down. There's one more way you can do it and it depends how you like it, how it's comfortable for your hands. So you can crochet, not turning your work on your fabric, you can keep it at the same position. After you finish this, you can So here's your, I don't want to lose my chain. So here's you, you finish the chain. All you do, pick up the work, move in front of the previous arch, previous row, put it 
inside or poke it through this arch in the middle right in between um, the picots you see it grab the thread and make single crochet stitch this is another way of crocheting it will be the same way for me it is more comfortable when I go and do it the way I showed in the first time it just honestly make more sense because we used to turn things around so I will continue the same way one two one two three four five for pico one two three again pico one two and a crochet and connect to the previous row into between two picos So this is the way you continue. And remember again, when you come to the end of this row and you will crochet odd number after you go back this direction, you will have to pay attention to crochet three picots and repeat three chains. And then you go back to the motif and connect to the motif with a slip stitch. And again, you know now how to manipulate the, uh, the chain. So when you will come to the point that you will have right here, you will have to make connection probably. Like in my case, I will have to connect to this just behind next to uh, Pico and then somehow connect to the leaf with a slip stitch and I go again go back so this is basically it when I will finish right in here this area I will have to go all the way to this tip right here and also there's area right in here that you have to crochet by itself so you will have to connect thread somewhere right in here in the area where the rows in between those two leaves and crochet background netting in here and it will be nice of course it will be happen we'll, I don't know how it will happen with me it's all unpredictable that it will you will done with that background netting right in here that you can reconnect with the background that you finish from this empty space and only then after you've done this part the small is basically what will happen here you will have a triangle that you will have to crochet background netting in here and you will have to crochet background netting right in here so when everything everything in your work will end in one line and you're done with connecting to the uh, motifs this is when you again can crochet back and forth to the last row and at the last row we will meet in the next video and I will show you how to finish that last row and how to crochet the edges of your project.